You played with Al Arbor, and did you... Call him think- Radar. Radar. Oh, right. That's Radar, right? Yeah. Did you think he was going to be a good coach, and did he really wear glasses all the time? He wore glasses all the time, and they used to call him Radar because he, radar because that's the, only, that's the only way he could play. He didn't know what was going on. I remember one time, Daryl and I were all, Daryl Sly uh, and I were always on defense together, and he was with Larry Hillman. Larry Hillman was a great defenseman, too. He went up, he went up to National Hockey League to Toronto, the next year, and played in the first line of the defense. I never could figure that out. Anyway, so everyone was going to the NHL, and you were staying in Rochester. I just stayed. And I remember one time I played with Hillman, and we were on for four straight goals, and he, it was all his fault. Sorry, Larry, but they were his fault. Yes. And, and I got benched. <laughs> and I went to Crozier, and I said, wait a minute. I get benched, and I said, Larry Hillman, it was all his fault. He says, yeah, I know there was fault. And I said, well, how come I get bet? She said, somebody might, he might play better with somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> and I got bent. Anyhow, Daryl, I remember Daryl coming over to the, I remember I got out, went off first. So you guys were changing. We're changing. And Al started to clean his glasses. And Daryl, come on, come on. He was always wiping his glasses. Yeah, he was all, they were fogging I up. remember one time he, he was like a dummy. He stuck out his stick and the puck ran right up his stick and cut him right between the eyes. And he came to the bench, and his glasses were all blood. What a not, what a not, you know, we didn't that think must have been could. a sight. Oh, that was really sight. And he was all blood. It was blood all over the place. Now, I wrote down a few things. Oh, we should tell a story about Jimmy McKenney. Yeah. Okay. Well, most people will remember Al Arbor as winning his coach, yeah. four Stanley Cups. Was, well, I, 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 yeah, four Stanley Cups. Of course, Cups. we always have a different take on players. Yeah. How we remember them is always different. Yeah. Okay. I just wrote a few things down. Sudbury, Ontario, come from. Uh, he, he coached six over 600 games. He had 781 victories. He was second to Scotty Bowman. Four Stanley Cups. He won four Stanley And, you know, it really did. If I played, everybody know, knew them then. I played uh, in, for the Windsor Spitfires. I came from Barrie, and I played, ju- I played uh, junior with him in the OHL. Yeah. Did he wear glasses then? Yeah, he wore glasses then too. Really, in junior? Yeah, he, wow. wore, he, yeah, he, wore, he always had glasses. And remember, folks, no helmet. You know, no, just no black. shield or anything. No shield. Just, just breakable glasses. Just, yeah, I'm sure <laughs> yeah. they weren't shatterproof either. <laughs> no, I don't. I, you know, I never, you know, I never thought of him playing with uh, glasses. You know, he just played glasses. And then he, he retired after 14 years and uh, 600 games. He played six. He, he knew how to play, and he went. I think he they made him coach in the expansion team, St. Louis. And then he was doing New York Islanders, and that's where he really shone. I mean, the, the players just loved him. And, uh, you know, he, he was a great so coach. So did you know he was going to be a good coach? You know, it's a funny thing. When Cro- Joe Crozier, who was a coach, had to go somewhere, he'd make Al look, you know, he was like the assistant. And we go, oh, no. Because he'd work as harder than Crozier. I don't know why he did it, but you could tell he was going to be. But we, he was a great guy. Should I tell a story about the time? Is, uh, I'll tell you a story. A guy, I hope I can remember it perfectly. We had a tough time all the time getting babysitters. And this, this uh, mother didn't want her daughter to have anything to do with, with the hockey players because we they're rough guys and everything. And Al wasn't like that at all. He very rarely had a beer. But one time... They hired him, and uh, mother says, well, I don't know, a hockey player. So young girl, she was about 12 or 13, and correct me if I'm wrong on this. I know mm-hmm. I told the story a long time ago. So Al, it, so Al come home, you know, he had a few beers and everything, and he went, to, I remember he told me he went to, to pick up some apples or something, and he tripped, and he fell, and he cut himself. So the little girl, he, he's going to get the money, and the, tell me if, if I made a mistake in this. But the little girl came, and here's Al <laughs> with all blood running down all like, and that little girl ran all the way home. I never forgot. She never was babysitter again. Her rep, our reputation as hockey players went down. And I remember Claire, his wife, they never had a television, and I had an old television. Imagine, imagine, and an old television, black and white. And you were the hero with the television. Yeah, I, I had two televisions, but I, one of them. And I remember giving Claire, imagine, we, we weren't making money, and I give him an old black and white, and that's what Claire, 
and him watched, and the kids watched this my whole black and white. And I and um, anyhow, I knew Al, and he was a great coach. I mean, he was second to Scotty, which guy he's got to be a good coach. But and, uh, you should tell them. He was kind of like he was mentoring the young guys in uh, Rochester, oh, right, Rochester right. and uh, you had uh, the wild man, Jimmy McKinney. The one oh, year. he wasn't wild. Well, he was wild. He was wild in junior, but he was good. He was supposed to, him and Bobby Orr come along at the same time. And he was supposed to, it was a neck and neck, uh, who was going to be great, uh, but greater, him or Bobby Orr. Jimmy McKinney or Bobby Orr, they were comp- comparing the two, coming out of junior. Yeah. So... And, and Toronto really had a good club. They'd won the Stanley Cup and the whole deal. And I remember we were at the Westbury Hotel, which is right behind the Toronto Maple Leaf Gardens. And Al was playing for Rochester. And he was, he was laying in bed and, and with his hands behind his back. I'll never forget it. And Jimmy was standing up at the end. And Jimmy had a couple. And uh, Al had a couple. And he said, listen, um, Jimmy, you listen to me. And you can make the National Hockey League. You know, I thought that was pretty good. And he says, you listen to what I do. And Jimmy McKinney talked, what? What? What am I going to do? Make the National Hockey League and roll around the ice and block shots like you? No way. Well, I went right to the floor, and Al looked at me. <laughs> I, I think he was with a guy named Jimmy Corgan. And, they, and, and uh, Jimmy, Jimmy McKinney doesn't touch a drop now. So how uh, did he get the name, like a lot of people know him around Toronto, as Howie? The, how he got the name Howie was Howie Young was a wild man, in the, and he, that was his hero, was Howie Young. And uh, anyhow, that's why they call him Howie. Because, and, but he, Jimmy McKenney, was, uh, he, he goes around now and uh, you know, talks to people that take drugs and everything. And, uh, he was great on television. 